Jesus being with us always you console us by your divine words fear not I am with you Lord Jesus enable all of us to find you and experience you in our lives we never want to lose you and we are always in need of your loving presence be with us O oh Lord amen my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ God is always in search of me God is always in search of you but today the question we need to raise in front of our own conscience is that am I trying my best to find out my God am I doing my best trying my best to find out my God with me finding God finding God and experiencing him is always found to be a, a, a Herculean task for some among us I still remember the words of an IPS officer the words of an IPS officer he said what did Jesus say to Peter you are rock and upon this rock I will build my church upon this rock I will build my church then he continues nobody can nobody can save themselves after hitting the rock nobody can save themselves after a hit on the rock then how he interpreted again the rock is not for your safety but for your destruction the rock is not for your safety but for your destruction this is the same this may be the same opinion of all those who could never find God's presence in their lives this could be the same look into the social media look into the situations all around look into the media segment look into all the situations around us we we happen to hear a lot of negativity is being spread all around against the church against uh, against the religiosity against the sacraments against the priests against the priesthood against the sublimation against the commitment against the divine will what is the deriving driving force behind them how we ever reflected what is the driving force behind them majority of those opinions of negativities majority of of those opinions of negativities are the outcome of the absence of God's presence in their lives is the outcome of the situation where they did not find God they could not find God they are not able to find God in themselves fear not 
I am with you, Jesus says. Always the scripture says, fear not. Even in Bethlehem, saluting Blessed Mary, the messenger said, fear not. And while talking to the shepherds, the angel said, fear not. You will find, you will find a God. Jesus always told his apostles, fear not, I am with you. And even after resurrection, when he encountered, when he had an encounter with his disciples, he said, fear not, it's I, it's me. Somehow, somehow, somewhere, somewhere, in some way or other way, we are afraid. We are afraid of two things. We are afraid to search God. We are afraid to give ourselves in search of God. Secondly, we are afraid that we will be found by God. We will be found by God. We are afraid of it. So humanly speaking, there is a tendency to get away from the divine. Naturally speaking, there is a tendency for everyone to get away from God. But never, never that road takes you towards a sublimation, a commitment, a joy, a peace. Whenever you get away from God, whenever we fail miserably to find God in our lives, Whenever we are unable to find God with me, with us, we become a big tragedy. Our lives become a big tragedy without an answer. Why are we afraid? Why are we afraid? There are three reasons. There are three reasons. We wish to be saved by God. We wish to be saved by God, but we never wish that we be saved by God through His own ways and means. But we want to save ourselves. We want to be saved through my own ways and means. That is the problem. We want to be saved, but in and through our own ways. That is the first reason. God has his own ways to prepare you, to deliver you, to, to cleanse you, to purify you, to anoint you, to consecrate you, and make you a divine human being. But we are not ready to follow those way, that way. But instead we want in our heart, from our heart we want that we be saved by our own ways. And the second reason, the second reason, we want to be saved. But we are not ready to pay the cost. We want to be saved by God, but we are not ready to pay the cost of it. We want to be delivered by God. We are not ready to pay the cost of deliverance. We want to be delivered. We, we, want, to be, uh, we want to be consecrated by God, but we are not ready to pay the cost of the consecration.
two people came to Jesus. One rich man asked him, Lord, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of God, to find out God's kingdom, to experience God's kingdom? Jesus said, go, sell off all your properties, come back, follow me. He went back sad and sorrowful. We want to be saved, but we are not ready to pay the cost. God has his own ways to prepare us. But what should be our response? Our response must be a blind, submissive surrender to the Lord. I would say a blind, submissive surrender to the will of God. And there we will find, we will experience God. We will experience deliverance. We will experience consecration. We will experience purification. We will experience peace and joy. There is a third reason. We want to be saved by God. But we prepare conditions for that. Being human beings, we prepare conditions. We propose conditions for our deliverance, our purification, our consecration. You know. You know, the, you, you are a best driver. You know, driving well. But does it permit you, does it allow you to drive your vehicle as you wish and like? Never. It is not possible. You will end up in a tragedy. You are sick. You are entering into a hospital. How can you be cured? How can you be cured? Until and unless you give up yourselves completely in the trust of God, in the trust of a doctor. You cannot say, I want to be cured by my own ways, in my own means. Not possible. You will end up again in a tragedy. You have to pay tax to the state. State has got its own means, its own methods, its own account, it, it, it own, its own accounting systems. But you say, I will pay the tax only according to my wish and my plan. Again, you will end up in a tragedy. So, the ways and means for our redemption the ways and means for my purification, the ways and means for my renewal, the ways and means for my consecration, the ways and means for my deliverance should be proposed by God himself. What should be our response? Again, I would say a totally blind, submissive surrender to the will of God. Fulton Jashin says, the moment, the moment a believer gives up himself into the hands of God, the, the God is totally in control over him. The Lord becomes the master of his life. The moment a person commits himself completely into the hands of the Lord, the Lord becomes the master of his life. And whenever we fail to, do so, fail to do so, we remain to be the masters of our own lives. Ending up into a tragedy, tragic situation. 
no peace, no joy, no satisfaction in life. Jesus said to his disciples, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, we have a prayer in the Latin liturgy. Look not on our, our sins, but the faith of your Catholic church. Look at the faith of your church. Yes. A church that totally commits, commits itself into the hands of the Lord. Looking at that faith, the Lord cleanses, purifies, consecrates you. Brothers and sisters, today the Lord makes an invitation for me and you to give up, to give up ourselves completely into his hands so that he may become the master of our lives. So that he may become the driving force of our lives. So that we may be guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that we may be directed according to the plan of God. So that we may be guided according to the principles of the Holy Spirit. We need. We need to give up ourselves into his hand. We need to give up ourselves into his hands so that he may become the master of our lives. Once he becomes the master of our lives, all our offerings become acceptable to him. All our prayers are accepted by him. All our offerings are accepted by him. All our penance, all our good works, all our commitment, everything is accepted by him. God himself and everything becomes rewarding. That is the dignity of Christian life. That is the dignity of Christian spirituality. Offer everything to the Lord and everything will be transformed. Everything will be purified and transformed and everything will cause our purification. Because it is no one else. It is God himself who purifies us, who consecrates us. My dear brothers and sisters, maybe in our personal life, maybe in our family life, maybe in our social life, if there is a person, if there is a person who is not able to find God with him, find God's presence with him, he will end up in a miserable condition. And from such hearts come out all the negative energies and negative manipulations that harm the human life and human spirituality. All those negative energies and negative manipulations proposed by those manipulated hearts and minds are there all around us. Be cautious. Be careful. Be careful. Let us be careful. Always and every day, let us make an examination of our own conscience to find out today, could I find my God with me? Could I find God's presence in me? Could I experience God's presence in me? Did I make, did I propose all the conditions for my deliverance? If then, time high has come to rectify, to correct it. It's time for us. It's time for us to have a blind Submissive surrender into the hands of the Lord, even at the point of death. If then, even the death will be transformed, even the event of death will be transformed by God for our salvation. Unamountable, unanswerable pain, incurable diseases, painful separations, 
collapses, financial destruction collapses, everything will be transformed by God and everything will be transformed and as a result, everything will cause our purification, our sanctification, our edification. God will bless us. There is no compromise in Christian spirituality. And so, there is no compromise in the mercy and compassionate love of our God. Let's pray. Jesus, have mercy on us. Open our hearts. Give us a new heart of flesh. Remove the stony heart from our within. Fill us with your power and grace so that we may become a living witnesses to your love. We may find out you in all the situations of our lives. We may experience you, Lord. We may be blessed. We may be consecrated. We may be anointed by the mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Amen.